In today's show, we're looking back at all of the action from Monday across the NBA. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter, as always, at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Locker Room. Download, download? No, download the Locker Room app from the iOS App Store and find one of our Locked On Rooms. Locker Room is changing the way that we talk sports. Let's talk those sports right now and let's have a look at the games from Monday. Of course, you're all well aware that the news of Jalen Brown out for the season with that wrist surgery. It's not the season. It's not the playoffs. He's like three to six months. It's a long one for Jalen. So go ahead and drop him and make sure that Evan Fournier is not uh, available on the waiver wire. Let's talk games. Let's have a look at that first one. And it was the Washington Wizards going down to the Atlanta Hawks, 125-124. Russell Westbrook breaks the record for most ever triple-doubles. We really put a lot of focus on triple-doubles, don't we? But Westbrook has been absolutely amazing down this stretch here. Couldn't get them over the line, but 28, 13, and 21. He's hitting his free throws again somehow, 100% from the line, 45, 46 from the field, in fact. And those 21 assists, absolute monster. Seventh-ranked player in category leagues over the last two weeks. And this is a bloke who was outside the top 70 for big stretches of this year. He's now up to 30th on the season, putting up some big, big numbers. And his ability to transform this in uh, during this season has been amazing. Brad Beal was out with his hamstring. He's going to miss the next game as well. They decided to start big Garrison Matthews, who did jack shit. Three points in his 14 minutes, while Alex Len had two points in 12 minutes. So that makes me want to go and have a look at how much Dan Gafford played. And of course, he played 15 minutes. Because Scott Brooks is either dumb, a liar, incompetent, dumb, or a liar. It's one of those five things. I reckon, could it be all of them? I don't know. Um, remember, remember, that, remember that question? Is Dan Gafford done more to deserve more minutes, Scotty? Yeah. Uh, and by yeah, he means no. So that's how we need to treat all the words that come out of that bloke's mouth from now on. We can drop Dan Gafford from here. Rui Hachimura, this is what he does when Bielo is out. The usage goes up. And that is what he requires to be a useful fantasy player. Because he doesn't do shit else. Like, he does nothing. 20 points, 3 rebounds, 0 assists, 1 steal, 0 blocks, 1 free throw attempt, 1-3. He is a subpar fantasy player. But in these scenarios, when Beal is out, Hachimura gets value. And we saw that today. Bertans hit five threes. That was all of his scoring. That's what he provides. Well, Chandler Hutchison, good defensive stats. Three steals and two blocks. I don't put any faith in that whatsoever, but the minutes uh, were up. And same with Ish Smith, who is a really strong streamer this week. Interestingly, he only had one assist. I guess when Westbrook's getting 21 of them, it's hard to get your hands on the ball. But 16 points with two threes, two steals and a block. And Hal Neto had 12 points in 31 minutes. But the Wizards just for one point short of the Hawks. While the Hawks, Johnny Collins, it happens, guys. Every time someone who's on my underperforming players list, they have a big one. John Collins had a good game as well. 28 and 8 in 33 minutes with two blocks and a steal. 7 of 7 from the line, 71% from the field. Big game there. While Trey Young has been unbelievable. He had a, a, a grade two ankle sprain, which is a four week injury. Comes back in a week and plays out of his brain. I don't know what the hell's going on with his ankle, but fantastic stuff. 36, 6, and 9. Well, Bogdan Bogdanovic had 25, 5, and 4 with 7 threes. Really, really good stuff. It was awesome to see DeAndre Hunter back. He only played 14 minutes. This is why you shouldn't be picking him up because he's going to be on a minutes restriction the rest of the week, I would guess. Lou Williams, just, yep, uh, two points in 11 minutes there. Kong were only the seven minutes, and Solomon Hill barely in the rotation. Fanner Pants played 37 minutes with Tony Snell out. Um, seven points for Herder, but with Hunter back, it is hard to get too excited about having Herder as a must roster. And the Italian cock. Danilo Gallinari. Hands off my cock. Yeah, he was hands off in this one. Eight points in 21 minutes. He's just a, a stream option. I think Hunter coming back is going to just cut the top a little bit off his value uh, as we move forward. Let's go on to the next game. This next game, who is it? It is the Indiana Pacers. They beat the Cleveland Cavaliers through DeMontis Sabonis. 21 and 20 with nine assists, two steals, and four blocks. And getting four blocks out of DeMontis Sabonis. A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. But is that as much of a surprise as a bloke by the name of Keelan Martin scoring 25 points? Now, he did it on 69% shooting. 
Giggity. So that's not going to be something that sustains. But with Brogdon, with Lamb, is, is Jeremy Lamb even alive at this point? I, just every game, questionable then out, questionable then out. Um, Martin stepped up and he was really good, but do not trust that for a second. Levert had 20 points with 10 assists and Timothy John McConnell had 10, 4, and 7 with 2 steals. Just the most stereotypical McConnell line you can get. Surely you've all dropped O'Shea Brissett by now. 23 minutes, 8 points with 2 blocks. The 2 blocks still are nice. While Dougie McDirt had 13 points in 18 minutes. And Ed Sumner started and uh, didn't do a huge amount. 4 fouls limited his playing time. 13 minutes for 2 points. He is not really too much of an option. Well, Goga was rough. Now, at least Goga did have the 2 blocks in his 9 minutes, but... Didn't play particularly well. Missed all four of his shots. He's obviously better than that. And he's an interesting blocks streamer uh, the rest of the way. For the Cavs, Kevin Love was resting. I'm not tired. Chetty Osman was out. Darius Garland was out. I'm not sure we see Garland again this year. So Dean Wadey Wade. 38 minutes, 19 and 12, three threes and three steals. Now, he does jack shit when he plays at small forward, but put him at power forward, and the numbers come pretty well for him. So good stuff from Wadey. While it was a great Isaac Okoro game, 22 and 10 in 43 minutes. Now, minutes have never been the problem for him. It's just been production. And he is the 257th ranked player this year, 218th over the last two weeks. Do I buy that he's an ad? No. Is he a desperation stream? Sure. Nice deeper league guy, but we know that the ups and downs are, are pretty... That's the only thing that's consistent, is that he is inconsistent. Good to see Jarrett Allen have a little bit of a bounce back, 12 and 9. Well, Colin Sexton uh, was rough. 25 points is nice, but when it shoots 27... Not it, when he shoots 27%, that hurts. Eight assists, also pretty good. Well, Finder Cabangale, nice numbers, 16 minutes, 9 points, 2 threes. He is a pretty good permanent fantasy player. Um, Damo Dotson started to... Um, Less than rapturous applause. Seven points with two threes in his 26 minutes. And there is a bloke by the name of Jeremiah Martin. Maybe that's the player who's going to have the big line for the Cavs at some point this week. Jeremiah Martin had three points in 15 minutes. Just remember that he exists and that he plays on this team because there are plenty of you, probably me included, that didn't actually remember that he played for this team. Guys, this episode is brought to you by Locker Room. Locker Room is the first social audio platform made for sports fans. The app is free to download, and once you're in, you can talk with fans, athletes, and insiders in real time about your favorite team or sport. Locker Room is the perfect place to start or join conversations about the NBA. You'll find fans just like you on Locker Room for watch parties, debates, post-game breakdowns, and of course, reacting to big news or rumors. You can even find Locked On hosts right across the NBA, the MLB, the NHL, college sports, and the NFL. I'll be joining the app soon, so why? I don't know why I read that part, because I'm already on the app, and you can find me there sporadically doing Locker Room um, Locker room rooms go download that app now available on all ios devices be sure to create a profile link your twitter and join the nba group for the latest league updates i know you'll find a ton of incredible rooms to satisfy your need to talk sports download the locker room app today locker room is changing the way that we talk sports all right got another game here to talk sports about sports talking Next one is the New Orleans Pelicans and the Memphis Grizzlies. The Pelicans, that's I think that might put them out of the uh, playoff mix or play-in mix now. The Grizzlies win at 115-110. Lonzo Ball, 12-8 with two blocks, two threes, and a steal. He's been really strong down the stretch. Uh, 23rd ranked player over the last two weeks. Well, it was a good Naji Marshall game. 12-11, three steals, and a block. Good stuff from Marshall. Um, probably just more fringe than anything else. And Nikhil Alexander-Walker. Only the 24 minutes, but really high scoring and good assists. 18 points with six assists. Just surely now we can just get Eric Bledsoe. Just get his ass all the way out of here. Get that garbage out of here! Just play Alexander Walker, play Kyra Lewis, and let's see what these dudes can do. Do I think Alexander Walker's a strong ad? No, I think he's a soft ad and more of a stream guy because I'm just worried about where the minutes sit, but this was obviously really good. Jim Johnson had 13, 7, and 5 with a steal. I think he remains an option for us there, while Bledsoe had 11, 5, and 5 on some pretty horrendous shooting, and Bill Hernan Gomez had 15 and 8. Jackson Hayes wasn't quite as good as last game, but now he's hitting threes, apparently. 13 points, three triples, shot uh, 100% on those threes. But the way that he's taking them, the confidence, is what I'm interested in. If he can develop into a three point shooter, then his fit next to Zion Williamson becomes you know, exponentially better. And it becomes much better than, say, Stephen Adams, who has been yeah, pretty poor, I'd say, for most of this year. Hayes is someone to have in 12-team leagues at this point. For the Grizz, Jaron Jackson Jr. started, had 12-7, and seven, but the four blocks is where it's really tasty now. There is two back-to-backs so, yeah, for the Grizzlies this week. So I think he sits tomorrow, and I think he might sit another game, making him a little bit of a tenuous hole. But given there are 11 games on tomorrow, you can probably just sit him on the bench and find someone active on your bench to slot in. So maybe not a drop just in that scenario. Valanchunas was pretty good. Jonas Vasu Inuansas. Especially the five blocks, but 20 and 11 gets it done, while Kyle Anderson had four blocks of his own. That's a shit ton of blocks. 19 blocks for the team. 
That is a lot. The uh, Pelicans had four. Um, Brandon Clark had eight and four. He had three blocks and two steals, bringing those college defensive numbers. And uh, Dylan Brooks had 23 points. That's the Brooks way. Two steals is nice, but the efficiency was horrible. 43 from the field on a lot of attempts, and then four of six from the line hurts there too. And that's just what he does. Well, if you want to talk about hurting, what the hell is wrong with this bloke? Ja Morant, 12 points. The 12 assists are sexy. Like That's great. I love Ja. That's fantastic. But you miss all five of your free throws. You're 36% from the line. At least you hit two threes. But the disappointment of Ja Morant's season continues. Still not a top 110 player for the year. And after that little surge where it appeared like he'd read my criticism, which he obviously did not, but he had that little surge where he's pushing forward, and now he's just gone back to being poor again. Really, really disappointing stuff from Ja. And I am absolutely not discounting the fact that that injured ankle has absolutely rooted him, because I'm pretty sure that that's, that's a huge part of it. But he just is not good at this point, and that offseason is going to be really key to getting back to full health and putting up the numbers and the production that we know that he can do. All right, next one. Um, weird one here. The Spurs, they kicked the ass of the Milwaukee Bucks, 146-125. So minutes down across the board for Milwaukee. Yanni had 28, Middleton had 23, 7 and 5, and Drew had 20 with 6 assists while the big ragu. Nice game from DiVincenzo, 12, 6 and 6 with 3 threes in those 26 minutes. But, you know, there is five games this week. Do they play tomorrow? They, they got their asses kicked here. Do they just say, well, we need to preserve health and energy heading into the playoffs? I'm not sure. Um, it is one to watch. If they had won this game, I would have said definitely they sit out on Tuesday. They, they can still beat the Magic with a half ass cast going in there. But I'm a little bit worried now about how this is all going to play out. Punch Bob had 13 and 5 with a triple one in 16 minutes, but hard to use him outside of streaming. Well, Lopez disappointed for 12 points in 23 minutes, and Brittany Forbes did his thing, and that's hit two threes and not a lot else. But very, very disappointing game from the Bucks in general. And I guess you look at the Bucks and go, well, they shot 50% from the field. Like, uh, uh, do they play that poorly? And then you look at the Spurs and you go, oh, they shot uh, 60% from the field. And it's really hard to win a game when the opponent just isn't missing anything. And that's what San Antonio is doing. Pirtle had 9-10 with 8 assists and 3 blocks. Since when is he an assist guy? Let's hope that continues. While Murray was also on my underperforming players list. So he just went out and had 21-6-9. and nine. Good stuff. Pat Mills dropped in 6 triples with 20 points. Does Mills play the remaining 4 games this week? I'd be pretty surprised. Well, even Kelden Johnson got in on the act. 20 points with seven rebounds. And Rudy Gay had 19 and five. So good numbers from those guys. Lonnie Walker did his thing. 19 points on 62% shooting. And not one of these blokes that I've mentioned shot under 50%. In fact, are you ready for an amazing stat? Not one single Spurs player shot under 50% in this game. Pirtle was at 50, which is amazing. He was the lowest. Um, he and Jeng and you, that is actually, now that is one of the wildest things. Only three, everyone was 50% or over and the three lowest field goal percentage players on the team were the three centers. That's wild shit. That's just not going to ever happen again. DeRozan had 23, three and three, but a little bit empty that line. But overall, just everything going right for San Antonio with those shots. The, the worry you have with guys like Mills and Gay, who put up some really good numbers, is that do they play the remaining four games? Do they play two more? Do they play three more? They can be honestly really solid streamers, but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple of those blokes sit out tomorrow, maybe even DeJounte or DeMar at some point this week, especially with this win, probably cementing them into the play-in scenario. Um, and that gives them a little bit more latitude to rest these guys on a pretty uh, pretty packed week for the San Antonio Spurs. Now, if you want a part for your car, don't trust me, but do trust me, because you want to go to the place that's going to have your best interest at heart, and that is rockauto.com. They are a family business serving auto parts customers online for 20 years. Why would you go into an auto store where the bloke behind the counter He's not gonna. He's not gonna care what you're after. He's just gonna try and make as much money as possible. He doesn't even have the time of day because he's just there, you know, just just to fill in his day. Really, he's gonna charge you different prices because you're not a mechanic. Or well, if you are a mechanic, then good luck to you. But if you're not, you're a do-it-yourselfer. So you want those prices for the parts for your car. And if you are doing it yourself, well, the reason you do it is to save money, not to have these blokes rip you off. So go to RockAuto.com and go and see how their prices are reliably low. And they are the same right across the board for everybody, professionals and do-it-yourselfers. Why would you spend up to twice as much for the same parts? Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck and right locked on in there. How did you hear about us box so that they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your sports action. Baseball season's in full swing. 
and you can track all of the action at Bet Online. Get all of the latest news, odds, and info for all of your sporting needs, including Major League Baseball, NBA, NHL, and all of your UFC action. Before the next pitch, head over to Bet Online on your laptop or mobile device and check out all of the great sporting news, sign-up bonuses, and contest information. And if you use our promo code Locked On, all one word, you can receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online are your online sportsbook experts. All right, let's go to the next game. The Utah Jazz and the Golden State Warriors. Wow, the Warriors went at 119-116. The Warriors were up huge, and the Jazz, mainly through Jordan Clarkson, had a furious comeback only for Steph to uh, get the lead back with a late three. Just a really, really entertaining game. Clarkson was amazing, though, in terms of the scoring. 41 points, 49% shooting, 43% usage. He was somehow a minus 17. He had zero assists and seven rebounds, but... Just a big Jordan Clarkson game. Bogdanovich had 27 with four threes and two steals, and Gobert had 10 and 16. A relatively empty night there from Gobert. Royce O'Neal had 10 points in his 33. Well, Ingles' struggles continue. He's uh, he's on the verge of being a droppable guy with the way he's playing. 5-3-5, five, and five, while Niang couldn't back up his big game last time out. Nine points with just two boards. He is only a deeper league type streamer. But uh, disappointing for the Jazz to lose this one, especially after they got the lead there towards the end. And um, the Warriors, Steph. 36, 4, and 6, 2 steals and 3 threes. 92 from the line. Unbelievable stuff there. Not his greatest performance, but still obviously really, really huge. Amazing how much better the Warriors have looked since James Wiseman got hurt. Um, I know he's a rookie, and rookies are generally bad, but the Warriors have just looked so much better without having to force feed him those minutes. Toscano Anderson was great again. 29 minutes, 5.7 rebounds, 5 assists, and 4 steals. Now, the triangle Eric Pascal could be back this week, but I don't think he gets his rotation spot back. So Toscano Anderson has... Look, he's a top 100 player over the last two weeks, so he can have some value. Draymond had 12, 6, and 10, and Bazemore. Good second half from Bays. 19 points, 2 threes, 1 block, 50% shooting, and Geordie Poole only 19 minutes, but 20 points with 4 triples. That's what he can bring as a nice points and threes streamer. Wigo was pretty off in this one. 14 points on 32% with one assist, five rebounds, zero steals, and zero blocks. Well, Looney providing, again, really good rebounds. 13 boards for Looney in his 30 minutes. He's been a really key part of what they've been doing as well. So now let's go uh, on to the last game of the night, the Houston Rockets and the Portland Trailblazers. 140 Portland, 129 Houston. Kenyon Martin Jr. again stuffing the stat sheet. 15 and 9, three threes, two steals, and a block. We talked about him months ago, saying if the opportunity is there, there's going to be value. Well, the opportunity is clearly here. Now, again, we still don't know whether DJ Wilson, Kevin Porter, Christian Wood, Sterling Brown, Avery Bradley, Eric Gordon, if they're going to play again this season. They all could. And then so much of what I say here means nothing. But they could all just not play again. So that is what makes it really hard with this team. Martin, I think, is a must roster player. Kelly Olynyk, 21, 8 and 6, pretty good. DJ Augustin had 21 points with four threes. Don't know how much I buy into that, but that was solid. Kyrie Thomas wasn't quite as good as his second game, but 18 points in 29 minutes with five assists. That's a lot of volume. Good assists, good ball handling, good, do a pretty good shooting. Actually, not pretty good shooting. 29% from three is rough, but there's value there. But of course, it could all just disappear. But I think they want to give these guys a look because you see a guy like Daniel House, who they put into the starting lineup and then played him only 13 minutes um, so they could give other guys an opportunity. But it is hard to work out how it works on a game-by-game basis. Daquan Jeffries has played almost 40 minutes a night recently, and he played 19 for two points. Anthony Lamb had been getting 30 a night, and he played 11 minutes here. Recently signed Cameron Oliver, a guy that had some good rookie translations, I remember coming into the league, had 13 points in 19 minutes. So trying to chase that player is tough. Yeah, Martin's the priority. Maybe it's Thomas next. Armani Brooks can get hot, 18 points all on threes at six triples, but not much else. But he can also go absolutely ice cold. It is very, very tough to get a handle on how those Rockets rotations are going to go with you know, seven blokes who could all be back next game, plus even in-game rotations not making much sense. Martin's the key one, though. For the Blazers, love that we get the reminder of how good Yusuf Nurkic is now when fantasy is pretty much done. 22-6-5, and five, three steals, a block, 29 minutes. He's elite, this guy, and it just frustrates me how bad he is, was to begin this season. Lillard had 34-9-6, and six, and McCollum had 28-3-7 and seven with six triples. Big game from uh, Storm and Norman Powell as well, 28 points with six rebounds in his 35 minutes. Bob Cove did what he needed to do, but you know, the six points is rough, but two threes, one steal, two blocks. That's really why you have Covington, and he delivered that area in that area. Mallow was out, and then Nasir Little got hurt, so Derek Jones Jr. had to play 23 minutes. 11-3-3 three three for Jonesy. 
Um, absolutely no interest in him from any sort of fantasy perspective at all at this stage. He's just uh, not a very good player. Let's have a look at the top ads and drops over the last 24 hours. Jackson Hayes up 12%. We don't know Stephen Adams' future, but I think Hayes is a worthy ad. Vanderbilt was up 6%. While well, McDaniels is back, so I don't love that one. Kyrie Thomas up 5 Yep, we're just taking a guess to see what happens, for sure. Devontae Graham up 3.5%. He could return on Tuesday. He's worth, worth a flyer. And then weirdly, Cam Reddish was up 3%. Now, he's not playing again this season. I don't think he's very good. This must be people in Dynasty Leagues taking a flyer on him. But again, I don't think he's particularly good. Um... Drops, Jeff Green down 5%. My name is Jeff. Landry Shamet down 4%, totally behind those. Dwight Howard down 4 I would definitely be holding Dwight Howard at this stage, just to see if Embiid plays tomorrow or not. Lou Williams down 3 and a half sure, and then Ken Birch down 3 That seems a little, uh, little, bit, um, little bit premature, I would think, but perhaps he's not going to have that much value this week, especially if Chris Boucher does return. Let's look at the top 10 players under 50% rostered. Um... We had, uh, why, what's, what am I, what's more in my brain? Why can't I uh, read that? I think that's the wrong, yeah, that's the wrong uh, list. That's why. There we go. That's right. Number one, number one, Dean Wade. Really solid game. And without Kevin Love, his value is there. Toscano Anderson. I like him as a 12-team league guy. Keelan Martin. I think is fluky. Pat Mills and Rudy Gay. Great value if they play. We just don't know. Uh, Ish Smith. Solid without uh, Brad Beal. Najee Marshall. Probably more 14-team leaguers. Same as Isaac Okoro. Uh, Armani Brooks and Chandler Hutchison. You know, some value to stream guys, especially like Brooks, but reliability is not particularly high. Let's now look at 11 games for Tuesday for FanDuel across the NBA. All right, so let's look at these games. 11 of them in the NBA for Tuesday. First one, Denver and Charlotte. Monty Morris could be back. He's questionable. There's still no PJ Doja, still no Will Barton. But Monty returning could have an impact on guys like Faku and Austin Rivers and Shaq Harrison for deeper leagues who have been playing some pretty solid minutes there. While the Hornets, um, still without. Gordon Haywood still without Miles Bridges, of course. The Nuggets five point favorites. The totals two seventeen and a half. There, Aaron Gordon also uh, probable for Denver. While Devonte Graham is questionable for Charlotte, Minnesota and Detroit. The Pistons, all of those blokes who have been uh, resting, they're tired again. I'm not tired. Corey Joseph, Mason Plumley, Jeremy Grant, Wayne Ellington, they're all out again. Um, Hamadou Diallo is out, but Josh Jackson and Frank Jackson are questionable now. They're both out. Saban Lee and Killian Hayes are going to get so many minutes at guard. So just watch that one. The Wolves should welcome back Jaden McDaniels. He is off the injury report after being out for some personal issues. So that has an impact on Jared Vanderbilt. Wancho Hernan Gomez is questionable there. Miami and Boston. No Victor Oladipo for Miami. Well, of course, there is no Jalen Brown for Miami. He is done for the season with that wrist surgery. Terrible news there. But that does elevate Evan Fournier. And then Aaron Neesmith gets a little bit of a boost. Rob Williams, also doubtful. The Clippers and the Raptors, no Serge Ibaka, of course, for the uh, for the Clippers. Well, for Toronto, no Lowry, no Ananobi, no Siakam, no Van Vliet, but potentially Chris Boucher. He's been upgraded to questionable. I don't really know why, but potentially he is back. But look for minutes for Flynn, Gary Trent, Jalen Harris, Yuta Watanabe, Stanley Johnson, um, Ken Birch, of course, um, Freddie Gillespie in that scenario that Boucher does not play. Dallas and Memphis, it is a back-to-back -back for the Grizzlies, so I don't expect Jaron Jackson to play. Grayson Allen will also be out, while Porzingis will be sidelined for Dallas. We don't know about Muxy Kleber yet. He is still questionable. Brooklyn and Chicago, no James Harden. The Nets are four-and-a-half-point favorites. The total is 232-and-a-half. The Shark, Bruce Brown, is questionable. Baby Shark, do -do 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 -do. While Troy Brown is questionable for Chicago, as is Daniel Tice. So look for Thad Young to start if Tice is out. Philadelphia and Indiana, Joel Embiid is listed as questionable with an illness, so pay attention to that. But Ben, ben Simmons and Seth Curry, who were out last game, they are off the off the injury report. We don't know about Brogdon, Lamb, and Sampson for the Pacers. I would have to assume they don't play, but we don't know uh, about that at this point. Orlando and Milwaukee, Wendell Carter Jr. is questionable for the Magic. Obviously, his presence does impact Mo Bamba and his value. While for the Bucks, an opportunity to rest players, perhaps. Let's watch to see what they do with their lineups. Phoenix and Golden State, this is a back-to-back -back for the Warriors. The Suns are five-point favorites. The total is 230. No Damian Lee, uh, no Kelly Oubre for the Warriors. Eric Paschal's unlikely to be there as well. While for the Suns, Cameron Johnson has been ruled out. So I would imagine they, hopefully, they go back to Jay Crowder after the Tory Craig Dario Saric debacle last game. The Thunder and the Kings, uh, the Salt Flake, Theo Maladon, he is out for the Thunder. 
Lou Dort and Ty Jerome are both questionable, while for the Kings, Buddy Heald is probable, Darren Fox is out, and Harrison Barnes is doubtful. The Kings are 10.5 point favorites. They're 224.5. Terrence Davis, DeLon Wright, big boosts for those guys. The last game is the Knicks and the Lakers. Alec Burks is questionable, while Emmanuel quickly is doubtful, while LeBron said he was going to play, and then his um, then his report or injury report came out and said he was out. So a little bit of confusion about LeBron's status. We know that Dennis Schroeder remains out. KCP, Marcus Gasol, Kyle Kuzma, Taylor Horton, Tucker, and Anthony Davis are all doubtful. But obviously that LeBron scenario has an impact on guys like Caruso, KCP, um, Kuzma, um, and, and their value in this game. So that's one to watch to see if we get more clarification on LeBron. For FanDuel pricing, if we look across the slate here, you have Watanabe, uh, Flynn, Millsap in Denver, Melton, Pokashevsky, do we even bother with Aaron Gordon? He is 3,900, but Jesus, he's been bad. Jalen Harris, Gary Trent, Rashawn Holmes, Dylan Brooks, uh, Alf Stewart. Is that you, Mr. Stewart? Well, who the hell else do you think it'd be? Get in here, you pair of flaming galahs. Jordan Poole, Jonas Valanciunas, Maga Porter Jr. Love him at 7,100 there. Yanni, maybe, but probably not. Ben Simmons at 6,700. Um... DeAndre Aiden and Andre Drummond, I don't feel particularly good about those guys. Maybe Marcus Smart, maybe Jay Crowder. That'll do it for today's show. Don't forget, hit the follow button on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, on Spotify, and on Odyssey. Well, on YouTube, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, hit the thumbs up, and leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.